Welcome to Get Fitness Success, where we learn about our body, mind, and spirit. This video does not replace expert medical advice. Ask a doctor if you have any questions. Please subscribe, like, and comment. I appreciate your support. In this video, we will learn about lung cancer including symptoms and treatments. Let's begin. Lung cancer is an illness that affects the lungs. There are two types of lung cancer small cell and non-small cell lung cancer. The most common type of lung cancer is small cell lung cancer. Each type of cancer cell grows and spreads in a unique way, and each is treated in a unique way. When normal cell division and development pathways are disrupted, lung cancer, like other cancers, results in an abnormal and uncontrollable growth pattern. A tumor is formed when the cells grow in size and form a mass. The term malignant, also known as cancerous, refers to any abnormal development in the body that immediately invades surrounding tissues and organs, spreads to other parts of the body, or has the potential to reappear after removal. Lung cancer has the potential to spread over a long period of time. In the United States, cigarette smoking is the most common risk factor for lung cancer. Many people who are exposed to cigarette smoke, or some of its components, will develop long-term lung problems. These changes have the potential to result in the formation of a malignant tumor in the lungs. According to the World Cancer Research Fund, non-smokers account for 25% of all lung cancer cases worldwide. There are a few cases where the underlying cause is unknown. According to the American Cancer Society, two out of every three people over the age of 65 have lung cancer. The average age of a patient when they are diagnosed is 70 years old. Despite being the second most common cancer in the United States, lung cancer is also the deadliest, accounting for the highest number of fatalities among all malignancies. Staging provides a clinician with a comprehensive understanding of the extent of a patient's cancer allowing him or her to make treatment decisions and estimate the expected outcome of a treatment. Doctors use precise terminology to describe cancer stages, but the following is a simple way to communicate cancer staging. Stage 1 would mean the cancer appears to have been contained to the lungs. Stage 2 and 3 means the cancer has spread to the lymph nodes of the thoracic cavity on a regional level. Stage 4, the cancer has spread to other parts of the body. The majority of lung cancers develop in the bronchial lining. Lung cancer can also develop in glands beneath the bronchial lining, which most commonly occurs in the lung's outer regions. Small cell lung cancer and non-small cell lung cancer are the most common types of lung cancer, and they grow and spread in a variety of ways. Non Non-small cell lung cancer is a type of lung cancer that does not affect the lung's tiny cells. Non-small cell lung cancer is significantly more common than small cell lung cancer because it develops and spreads more slowly. Non-small cell lung cancer is classified into three types based on the type of cells from which it develops. Adenocarcinoma is a type of lung cancer that develops around the periphery of the lung and varies in size and rate of growth. This is the most common type of lung cancer, affecting both smokers and non-smokers. Squamous cell carcinoma is a type of cancer that most commonly begins in one of the main breathing passages in the center of the chest. Lung tumors can range in size and location from very small to extremely large, depending on their location and size. In most cases, large cell carcinoma develops on the periphery of the lung, spreads quickly, and is already advanced when it is discovered. Small cell lung cancer is less common than non-small cell lung cancer, accounting for about 15% of all lung cancers. The incidence of small cell lung cancer is lower than that of non-small cell lung cancer. This type of lung cancer grows rapidly, is usually advanced at the time of diagnosis, and spreads rapidly to other parts of the body. It is the most prevalent form of lung cancer. Chest cancers are extremely rare. There are over a dozen different types of uncommon tumors that can develop in the chest, and they can originate in the lung or elsewhere in the body. Parsinoid tumors and malignant mesothelioma are two less common types of cancer. Mesothelioma is a cancer of the mesothelium, a protective membrane that surrounds the majority of the body's internal organs and is responsible for the disease's development. This rare cancer affects the mesothelium that surrounds the lungs, but it can also affect the pericardium, which covers the heart, and the peritoneum, which covers the intestines. Mesothelioma is a cancer that appears decades after a person has been exposed to asbestos. Lung cancer symptoms do not usually appear until the disease has progressed significantly. Some people, on the other hand, exhibit signs and symptoms almost immediately. Here are a couple of examples. Coughing that does not appear to be improving, hoarseness, coughed up blood, weakness, wheezing, an infection that recurs or refuses to leave, or you notice that coughing and laughing aggravate chest pain. According to the American Lung Association, advanced lung cancer symptoms include Cushing's syndrome, 
shortness of breath, chest pain, tiredness, and or unintentional weight loss, bone soreness, headache, muscular weakness, and or drooping eyelids, among other symptoms, indicate that the disease has spread to other parts of the body. Lung cancer is typically discovered after a chest imaging check reveals an abnormality, or after the illness has progressed to the point where it is causing symptoms such as coughing, shortness of breath, chest pain, weariness, and or weight loss. To make a definitive diagnosis, a biopsy, which is the removal of cells or tissues from a suspicious bulge, is required. Lung biopsies can be done with a camera fed through the breathing tubes or with a needle injected through the skin into the lung tumor. If none of these approaches work, surgery may be necessary to obtain a correct diagnosis. A biopsy is required to determine whether or not cancer exists, as well as the type of lung cancer present. Clinical trials are being carried out. Participating in a clinical trial may be an option to consider for some people. Clinical trials are required to determine whether innovative cancer treatments are safe and effective as well as whether they are superior to currently available treatments. The majority of conventional cancer treatments are based on prior clinical research, which is still ongoing today. Patients who participate in a clinical study may receive standard care or, if the study is successful, may be among the first to receive a revolutionary treatment. Patients who participate in clinical trials aid in the advancement of cancer treatment by allowing researchers to learn more about their disease. Even if clinical trials do not result in the development of novel, effective drugs, they frequently provide answers to important questions and contribute to the advancement of medical science. Screening for lung cancer is an important part of cancer prevention. When a healthy person who is at high risk for lung cancer but has no symptoms is examined, lung cancer screening can be performed to detect lung cancer at an earlier stage, when it can be treated more effectively. Low-dose chest CT-based screening has been shown to reduce the proportion of people who die from lung cancer who are at low risk of complications when performed in a high-quality setting. Lung cancer is a treatable condition. To determine the most effective treatment for a patient's cancer, all relevant information about the patient, including their health status, tumor type, and the extent to which the disease has spread, is gathered in one place. Lung cancer is a difficult disease to treat. The cell type and stage at the time of diagnosis are the most important factors in determining cancer patient survival rates. Those who are diagnosed at an early stage and live in a specific geographic area may be able to be treated. Most people are diagnosed when their cancer has spread outside of their chest or when their chest nodes have been compromised by the disease. Aside from that, because the lungs are such delicate organs, some therapies may be difficult to tolerate. Lung cancer has one of the lowest overall survival rates of all cancers as a result of this combination. Lung cancer patients had a two-year survival rate of only 25%. Only about 15% of those who survive five years are still alive. It is critical that you discuss your lung cancer treatment options with your doctor. Some treatments may be used to keep cancer under control. These treatments can be used alone or in conjunction with one another. Two cancer treatment options to consider are chemotherapy, and targeted medications. Chemotherapy treatment entails administering drugs to rapidly proliferating cells, such as cancerous tumors. Chemotherapy can be given directly into a vein intravenously, but it can also be given through a catheter, which is a thin tube that is inserted into a large vein and left there until it is no longer needed. Some chemotherapy drugs come in pill form and must be swallowed whole to be effective. Targeted agents are a type of drug that targets specific flaws in cancer cells or supporting organs like blood arteries. They are currently being worked on. These drugs can be administered orally or intravenously. These agents are most effective in cancers that have specific mutations in their genes or cell receptors. Chemotherapy may be used in conjunction with surgery to improve survival rates in the early stages of non-small cell carcinoma. Chemotherapy and targeted therapies can be used to relieve symptoms and extend survival time in advanced stages of non-small cell lung cancer as well as in all stages of small cell lung cancer. When used in conjunction with chemotherapy, it has an effect on both healthy and malignant cells. Your doctor's goal will be to minimize side effects as much as possible while still successfully treating the cancer. The type of medication and the dosage have a significant relationship. They can be unique to each person and may only last for a short time. To name a few, chemotherapy side effects include nausea and vomiting, hair loss, mouth sores, and tiredness. If you experience any side effects, 
your healthcare providers can advise you on how to manage them and assist you in alleviating any symptoms that may arise during or after the procedure. Radiation therapy is an X-ray treatment that kills cancer cells by using high-energy X-rays. It can be used to treat cancer either alone or in conjunction with chemotherapy. It can help advanced cancer patients relieve pain, constriction of the airways, shortness of breath, and coughing. Radiation therapy is a focused treatment, which means it is designed to have the greatest possible effect on cancer cells while causing the least amount of damage to healthy cells. The most common source of radiation used in the treatment of lung cancer is a machine, this is known as external radiation. Radiation can be delivered to the tumor from within the body via tubes that implant a radioactive seed near the tumor. This is called internal radiation or brachytherapy. Radiation therapy side effects are primarily determined by the area of the body being treated as well as the dose of radiation used during treatment. Side effects of chest radiation therapy include a dry, scratchy throat, difficulty swallowing, fatigue, skin changes at the treatment site, and loss of appetite, among others. For several years, a high-tech approach to radiation therapy known as radiosurgery has been a significant source of innovation in the profession. Radiosurgery, which uses extremely high doses of precisely focused radiation aimed solely at the small tumor in the lung, is a successful treatment option for a small number of people who have small tumors but do not want or cannot undergo surgical intervention. Surgery is still considered the gold standard in the early stages of lung cancer and is used to treat the disease. According to research, surgical removal of the tumor and surrounding lung tissue provides the best chance of complete recovery for patients with confined disease. Thoracic surgeons who specialize in the treatment of lung cancer and other types of chest cancer should perform any surgical intervention. Your surgeon determines whether or not a tumor is resectable, meaning removable, because of their proximity to or invasion of vital organs and structures, not all cancers are resectable. Surgery may not be the best option for people who have a number of medical issues or poor lung function. The location of the tumor in the lung, its size, the patient's body type and weight, and any previous chest surgeries are all taken into account when determining how much lung tissue should be removed and what surgical approach should be used. When resection is necessary, minimally invasive procedures are considered. Thoracic surgeons who have received training in video-assisted thoracic surgery, VATS lobectomy, and robotic surgery are frequently called upon to perform these procedures. Lung cancer surgical excision is frequently carried out in the following ways. A segmental or wedge resection is a surgical procedure that involves removing only a small portion of the lung. The surgical removal of a specific section of lung tissue is referred to as a lung lobectomy. Today, this is the most common type of lung cancer surgery. Pneumonectomy A pneumonectomy is the surgical removal of the entire lung along with its surrounding tissues and organs. The extent of thoracic surgery, whether minimally invasive or not, as well as the patient's age and physical fitness, all influence the patient's ability to recover. Many patients are able to return home within three to four days of their surgery. Patients who have undergone minimally invasive surgery can usually return to work three weeks after the procedure. Controlling pain is critical. Pain can be a major issue for cancer patients undergoing treatment. Pain can be caused by a variety of cancer treatments as well as the disease itself. In addition to preserving or improving people's quality of life, Effective pain management can reduce the likelihood of them developing depression as a result of their pain. Although smoking is a significant risk factor for lung cancer, quitting can be difficult for some long-term smokers. Because smoking habits differ from person to person, there is no ideal method for quitting smoking that can be used. When it comes to smoking cessation programs, the most effective ones offer smokers a variety of choices. Lung cancer is a disease that cannot be completely avoided. There are, however, a few steps you can take to reduce your chances of developing the condition. If you smoke, you should give it up. Take the following steps to reduce your exposure to cancer-causing compounds. Arsenic, asbestos, beryllium, cadmium, nickel and chromium-containing substances, coal-derived products, pollution from diesel engines, for example, degrades air quality. Check your home for radon, a radioactive gas that is colorless and odorless. Maintain a nutritious and well-balanced diet. Physical activity on a regular basis is advised. You will receive guidance from your healthcare professionals regarding what to expect in terms of follow-up care, lifestyle modifications, and making critical health-related decisions after cancer treatment has been completed. Following treatment for localized or regional lung cancer, with the goal of curing the cancer, 
follow-up tests will be performed to ensure that the cancer does not recur in the future. In addition, you will be screened for treatment-related side effects, and treatment will be provided to alleviate any symptoms that may be associated with the treatment. In patients with metastatic lung cancer and treatment, the goal of follow-up care is to improve quality of life while also extending survival time. Over time, tests will be carried out to determine how the cancer reacts to therapy and to keep track of any side effects that may occur. These follow-up tests will determine the length of treatment and whether or not it is necessary to change therapies. If you've watched this far, please like and subscribe. Now, go get fit.